Hey guys, today we're going to be working on making a quest system. And before we get started, I want to acknowledge just how massive this topic is. A quest system can form the backbone of an entire game. It's often the thing that is responsible for driving the game's story and progress, as well as tracking the player's behavior and updating the game world accordingly. So if you've been thinking about making a system like this, and it seems overwhelming, and you don't even know where to start, the truth is just that you need to spend a lot of time thinking and planning this. It's overwhelming because it has so much complexity to it. It's definitely not going to be a straightforward thing to make, and it will probably take a while and multiple iterations as you make the game. So a lot of what I want to do today is to guide you through brainstorming some ideas and planning the system. So we'll just be doing the conceptual planning today, and in the next tutorial we will jump in and start coding. Obviously I'd recommend sitting through this one so that you know why we end up choosing what we do, but if you don't care and just want to see the code, then you can jump ahead. At its most basic, a quest system can involve simply checking and toggling variables to mark a quest as complete. But of course, quest systems can be as varied as games themselves. Some games have simple linear quests, some have hundreds of quests, some randomly generate them, some have a limited number of quest types, and some have quests that can't really be sorted into types because they're all complex and unique. So these are the kinds of things you want to explore before committing your quest system to code. Because as with any system, you want to make it as efficient as possible, but not if it means sacrificing some kind of idea or functionality that you had for a quest. So have a brainstorm now about your game and what your quests are going to involve. So ask questions like, are the quests going to be simple or complex? Are they going to have a dialogue before a quest starts? Are you always going to get a quest from an NPC, or can you get some, for example, for just walking into a room? Do you want to track who gives you the quest? Do you want to create template quest types, like gather, delivery, escort, and kill quests, to make it easy to quickly make new quests or randomly generate them? Or are they all going to be unique? Can your quests resolve differently depending on a player's choice? Do you want to track the outcome of a quest? Will your quests have rewards? Will they have events, cutscenes? And so on, right? The possibilities here are endless, so I'd recommend dedicating some time to brainstorming elements like these and making a list of everything you need the quest system to do. Now let's consider the case where all quests are fairly typical in structure, in that you could group all of them into certain types. In that case, you should define those types and then set up what information you would need for each type template. So a good place to start for this is a grid of data, where each row is a different quest, and each column defines the inputs and elements of a quest. So column one, the first column, might be the type of quest, and then column two might always be the title of the quest. So those might be common to all of the quest types, but from then on we're going to get some variability on what the columns do. So for the gather quest, column two is going to be what object I want to gather, column three could be the number I want to gather, Column 4 could be the NPC I want to return to to finish the quest, and then finally column 5 is the reward. But for something else, so like an escort quest, we have the NPC I want to escort, the coordinate that I want to escort it to, the room of the game that I want to take my object to, finally the NPC to talk to to finish the quest, and then the rewards. And really, these columns could be anything you want, so you could have an index for the quest, the name of the quest, something that tracks the stage of the quest if you've got multiple stages to it, description of the stage, so what might come up in the quest log to tell the player what to do. So just note that you might have different columns and sort of widths of the columns for your different types, that's going to be fine because once you plug this into the logic of your quest system, it knows that when it's reading a gather quest, it knows to just look in these five columns, and when it is reading a kill quest, it knows to look in these ones. So. Your quest system code for this would just consist of general logic for each quest type. So it will be able to take in whatever inputs you give it from the quest data, which define what the quest is, and then it will just run the quest. And really, once that general logic is set up, you could feed it an infinite number of quests and perhaps even randomly generate some of them. So this is great for a system where you would want to have lots and lots of quests. It's good to put them into types so you can quickly prototype them. And it would be good for you as the programmer to hand it to your designer and you could just get them to fill in the basic information here. So just note that this system is general. The quests are always going to work in the same way, so no quest is going to have unique logic to it, it's always going to be exactly the same thing. The only thing that's changing is the details. 
So you're losing a little bit of control and also unique elements to the quests if you just have them like this. On the other hand, we could consider a game where it has quests that are all very unique and require a lot of complex logic to them. So they're going to have, let's say, lots of different events in them, lots of dependencies on other systems, lots of player choices. So basically you would have to keep looking up data to check what the player's done previously, who they've talked to. It would have a lot of stages to it, all of this stuff. So it would have to work with a lot of systems. So in that case, you might want to actually just define the logic for each quest individually. So this is called hard coding it. And obviously this is more time consuming because you have to write the logic for every single quest. So it doesn't lend itself well to a game where you would want to have quick short quests or randomly generated quests, but it does allow for greater flexibility and unique quest elements. And if your game is very story-based and linear and you're not going to see repeated types of quests, right, every single quest is, is different from the other one, then it might just be simpler and more desirable to do it this way. That said, even with complex quests, like the one I just said, it's still possible to group quest logic. You could break a quest down into different components. So at the start, you might have a travel component, then a cutscene, then an escort, then a dialogue component, then a kill component, and so on. So your quest data could just involve outlining those components in a sort of modular way. All right, so I think we can appreciate just how varied quest systems can be, but for the purposes of this tutorial, Let's explore some of the common underlying features of all these quest systems and get to work implementing them. So regardless of what system you need, you will likely have a bunch of data in some kind of grid or list or array structure containing the details of the quest. And you'll want your quest system to be able to read, track and update that data. So this backbone of the quest system is what we'll be making today. So let's have a think about how we're going to represent our quests and quest system in GameMaker. So we could have a single quest system object that takes care of absolutely everything quest related. So we'd store all the quest data and all the logic in that object. Or we could have a parent quest object, kind of like a class, and then every quest would be a child of that parent with just some unique data and variables. And then once a quest is finished, it can just be deleted. Of course, if you are deleting them like that, you may also want to store some of the results of that quest in some kind of master quest data object if you want to refer to what happened or what the player chose later. But let's just start simple and have it in one object. Now, let's say that our data is just going to comprise of a few things, so something a bit simpler than what I was showing before. It's essentially just going to be what's going to show up in the quest log. So in the first column, I'm going to have the name of the quest. So I'm going to call this paint things. And then in here, this is going to be the stage of the quest. So I'm going to make all of them start at minus one by default. So this is going to mean inactive quest. We haven't started it. And then here we can define the different stages of the quest. So I'm going to put this in an array so we can define an array just by using square brackets like this. So first we could put paint a tree red. So that would be stage one of the quest and then paint a tree blue and then paint an NPC pink. So there's just going to be three stages to these quests. And when I am accessing the quest log, I can use this value right here to access a certain entry in this little array. So paint a tree red, that would be when the quest stage is zero. And then when the quest stage is one, it would be accessing this entry, the second entry. And obviously you can have more columns of additional elements that you want to set out in your quests. And we might look at doing some of those in future tutorials on this topic, but I'm just going to stick with these for now. So now how are we going to represent this kind of grid in our quest system object? So some candidates here are the various types of data structures. So you could use DS lists, which are basically like arrays, and each entry in the list could be an array of quest data. Or we could use a DS grid, and it would just work the same way as what we've set out in our grid spreadsheet. Or we could use DS maps, and they can be good because you have a key pair where to grab an entry from your map, you give it basically a key. And this could be the ID of the quest. But I'm just going to go with a DS grid because I think it's the simplest to use when we're storing and retrieving data. And with the others, you would likely have to be storing data structures within data structures to get all your information in there. Plus, a grid is just the perfect analog for the way we've already been planning out our quest data in a spreadsheet. 
So say we create this data structure that holds all the information for our quests. That data structure would exist at the very start of the game, so it would have every single quest and all the data required for it. But obviously those quests aren't going to be running at the start of the game because they're all set to inactive. So to that minus one. All right, so now that we've got our data set up, how are we going to update the quest in the game? So how do we know if the player has painted a tree red? Or how do we even paint a tree red? Or to take a more complex example, what if I had a quest where I wanted to kill a demon with the protagonist's grandparent's sword and no other weapon, specifically that sword? Or how do we know if the player selected a certain dialogue option? So I want to briefly mention this just so we can consider at this point that there can be a lot of complex logic to a quest. And although I'm not going to cover exactly how to handle something like this in the tutorial, I just want to mention that what you could do is set up an event dispatcher, where we have basically any important gameplay event firing an event to this sort of controller event dispatcher. So say picking up an item, or if we drop one, or if we kill something, or if we step into a certain room or house or zone, anything like that would trigger an event. And then our important systems, like the quest system, could listen for those events and say they want to receive information about certain types of events. So the quest system could say, I want to receive information about killing objects. And the events themselves could contain as much data as you want. So for example, a killing creature event could contain information about the specific instance ID that was being killed, the type of creature, so a goblin or something, the location that it happened at, what time of day, what weapon killed it, anything like that. So it would contain all that information so that if you had a quest that was like kill 10 shades with a light scroll at night, you could pick up that event. So I'm not going to be doing this today as it deserves a tutorial or three all in itself, but it's good to keep in mind. We're just going to be hard coding everything and going through some examples. All right, that will do us for today. So we finished our planning and in the next video, we'll be jumping in and coding the system. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. So this video was actually chosen by a vote on Patreon, so thank you to everyone who voted, I thought this was a really interesting topic. And special shoutouts to Sammy Myth, Bartholomew Liswan, Cursed Toast, Daniel Hargrave, Doan Tegbin, Vasco, XD Game Studio, Umberto Gonzalez, Hunter T, Ian Seckington, Shake Bunny, The Great Poultry, Thomas M, Max Molinaro, Monju72, Move Podcasts, Mistara, Ricky C, Straya Moon, Spock 2018, and Semi Metal Alchemist. Take care, guys, and I will see you in the next video.